Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the Sigma 56mm f1.4, a short telephoto prime lens, now for the Fujifilm mirrorless system. Yes, after several years of collective prayers, Sigma has finally released its triplet of f1.4 prime lenses designed for APS-C mirrorless cameras, now in the X mount. And here they are from left to right, the 16 1.4, 31.4 and 56 1.4. And in case you were wondering, the 18-52.8 zoom, first released last year, is coming to the X mount soon. Mounted on a body with an APS-C sensor, the 16mm delivers 24mm equivalent coverage, a useful wide angle for landscapes, architecture, group shots or filming pieces to camera. The 30mm delivers 45mm equivalent coverage for an almost standard field of view, that's an ideal general purpose option. Meanwhile, the 56 delivers 84mm equivalent coverage, a classic short telephoto that's ideal for portraits or details. And all three have bright f1.4 apertures, allowing you to maximise the shutter, minimise your ISO, or of course enjoy those shallow depth of field effects. Now, I've already reviewed all three lenses in their previous versions, either for Micro Four Thirds, Sony E, Leica L, or Canon EFM mounts, but I wanted to revisit them in their latest X mount guises to see how they perform on Fujifilm bodies, and crucially, how they compare to existing Fujifilm lenses. After all, while the Three Sigmas literally doubled the number of native primes for the woefully neglected Canon EOS M system, they enter a far more competitive market for Fujifilm owners, who already have two or more primes available at these or similar focal lengths. Fujifilm alone offers three primes around this focal length. The fractionally faster 56mm 1.2, which costs $999 or £849, the compact XF 50mm f2 at $449 or pounds, and the fastest XF 50mm f1.0, yes 1.0, weighing in at $1499 or pounds, and I've got a separate review of that if you're interested in that lens, it's really nice. Meanwhile, the Sigma 56 1.4 is launched at $479 or £379, pitching it closer to the budget Fujifilm f2 lens, and if that pricing follows previous versions, it could later find itself at a street price of around $405. For the record, Viltrox has the most affordable 56 1.4 on the X mount for just $329, but I've not tested it. I wanted to compare the Sigma against one of the three Fujifilm lenses, and in the absence of a perfect match in specification or price, I've decided to go for the XF 56mm 1.2. Now this may be the eldest of the three Fujifilm lenses at this focal length, but remains a hugely popular model that still competes well with newer designs. Sigma launched the X-mount version of the 56 1.4 in February 2022, but it's based on the original model first released three and a half years earlier in September 2018. The mount is new, and the electronics adapted to work with Fujifilm's autofocus and in-camera corrections, but the optics, the build, and the overall quality remain the same as before. So even though the X-mount version may have been launched in 2022, it employs a lens design from 2018. But that still makes the core design of the Sigma 56 over four and a half years newer than Fujifilm's own XF56 1.2, which was launched in January 2014. For the record, the XF 50mm f2 was launched in January 2017 and the XF 50mm f1 in September 2020. Clearly the Sigma 56 is not competing against the Fujifilm 50 f1, but if enough people want it, I'll try to make another comparison against the more affordable 50mm f2 in the future. Just let me know in the comments. Alright, let's get on. At 67 by 60 mil and weighing 280 grams, the Sigma 56 1.4 is a satisfyingly light and compact lens with a 55 mil filter thread. Alongside, on the right, you'll see the Fujifilm XF 56 1.2 is a little larger all round, with the wider barrel taking larger 62 mil filters, and is heavier too at 405 grams. But neither lens will occupy much space in your bag. Sadly, the XF56 1.2 predates Fujifilm's widespread weather sealing, so this time the Sigma takes the lead even though it's only officially sealed at the mount. In terms of controls, the Sigma has only one, a generously wide and smooth motor-assisted manual focusing ring with aperture control left to the body. Sigma supplies a fairly short but effective cylindrical lens hood. In comparison, the Fujifilm XF56 sports a manual aperture ring adored by many Fujifilm owners and is supplied with a longer cylindrical hood. Okay, now for my test, starting with autofocus when mounted on an X-T4 body. 
Here's the Sigma 56 1.4 at f1.4 and using single autofocus with a central area where the lens pulls focus reasonably quickly between the near and far bottles with a little wobble to confirm. For comparison, here's the Fujifilm XF56 1.2 at f1.2 where it's actually delivering a similar experience to the previous result from the Sigma. So in terms of autofocus speed and confidence here, there's no real benefit to this particular Fujifilm lens, although the newer XF lenses are better in this regard. Next for video autofocus with the X-T4 set to continuous. You're looking at Sigma 56 1.4 at f1.4 here, where there's some hesitation or overshooting, not to mention some moments where it fails to find the focus altogether. Switching to the XF 56 1.2 at f1.2, and you'll see the focusing hesitate as it tries to find the right spot and occasionally miss it too. To be fair, some of the issues are body based here as Fujifilm has so far failed to nail these kind of focus pulling tests in any of my reviews. Now for a face tracking test in video, using face and eye detection on the X-T4 with the Sigma 56 1.4, and this combination fails to find me for some time. I found that if I did stand still, it would eventually find me and become reasonably sticky afterwards, but one person video creators should be cautious of this combination. But then here's the Fujifilm XF 56 1.2 at f1.2 and it's really no better on the X-T4, failing to find me until several seconds into this clip. Again, once it does find me, it can remain reasonably sticky, but the initial acquisition can be slow. This is again as much an issue with the body and Fujifilm's video AF though. Okay, next for sharpness across the frame with my distant landscape view of Brighton Pier, focused in the middle and angled so that fine details run into the corners of the frame. I'll start with the Sigma 56 1.4 at f1.4 and taking a close look in the middle of the frame shows a lot of fine detail. Now let's put the Fujifilm XF 56 1.2 on the right, open to f1.2, where it too is delivering a similar degree of detail. Both lenses look so good in the middle out of the gate that closing their apertures does little to improve the image, although the Fujifilm is arguably a little more contrasty at this point. Now back to the Sigma 56 wide open at f1.4 and moving into the far corner shows the image becoming progressively softer. Compared to the Fujifilm XF 56 1.2 on the right at 1.2 though, and you'll see it's noticeably crisper, although it's also suffering from more pronounced darkening due to vignetting. Closing the aperture sees both lenses improve, and by f4 the Sigma is looking pretty good in the corners, although the Fujifilm enjoys a leader each aperture setting in this test. Some of this is due to it having a flatter field, and if you focus in the corner the Sigma will improve. Moving on to portraits, the bread and butter of short telephotos like these, and the Sigma 56 1.4 here is delivering the goods with a sharp subject driven by the X-T4's face and eye detection, and an attractive blurred background behind. Let's put the Sigma on the left and the Fujifilm 56 1.2 on the right, both wide open so the latter's working at f1.2 here. Now it's fairly subtle but the f1.2 lens on the right is delivering a fractionally shallower depth of field but I wouldn't choose it based on this alone as both are delivering smooth rendering in the background and very sharp details in the middle. Just for the record, here's the Fujifilm on the right, close to f1.4 to match the aperture value of the Sigma on the left, where they become even closer. I'd really be very happy using either lens for portrait work. Next for bokeh blobs with the ornament in the middle near to the minimum focusing distance. This was taken with the Sigma 56 1.4 at f1.4 again, where there's some cat's eye shapes toward the corners, but on the whole the bokeh balls have nice smooth edges and minimal patterns within. Popping the Sigma on the left and the Fujifilm 56 1.2 on the right at f1.2 again, reveals the Sigma delivering slightly greater magnification from the same distance when focused close, perhaps due to greater breathing. But this in turn has resulted in larger blobs. There's more defined outlining to the Fujifilm bokeh balls, which you may or may not prefer. You may also notice the aperture blades of the Fujifilm more as the aperture is closed. Personally, I prefer softer and rounder edges, but again, I'd be very happy with the way that either lens renders point sources of light. And now it's time for my final verdict. The Sigma 56 1.4 DCDN may employ an optical design from 2018, but continues to deliver compelling performance in its latest X-mount version for Fujifilm mirrorless cameras. The aperture may not quite match the exotic sounding f1.2 of the Fujifilm XF 56, but in my test, the Sigma proved to be a solid rival. The Fujifilm XF56 1.2 may be sharper in the corners wide open, but close the Sigma down and that gap narrows. More importantly, for a short telephoto lens that's like to spend most of its time shooting portraits, the Sigma 56 captures crisp details towards the middle and attractive smooth rendering in the background. 
In my test, the Fujifilm 56 1.2 was equally good at this task, but not significantly better. Where the Fujifilm lens scores over the Sigma is the aperture ring, slightly more confident focusing, albeit not faultless, and the impression of a tougher barrel, albeit lacking the weather sealing at the mount of the Sigma. While the Fujifilm 56 1.2 remains an easy lens to love, the Sigma 56 1.4 matches it in the most important qualities for a portrait prime lens, while adding some weather sealing and crucially coming in at just under half the price. If you already own the 56 1.2 or the 50 1.0, there's no benefit to switching, but if you want to short tell a photo with an f1.4 aperture that won't break the bank, the Sigma 56 has you covered. It represents excellent value and comes highly recommended. And that's the end of this review. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget that I've also got reviews of the other two Sigma Primes for the Fujifilm X mount system, as well as an in-depth report on that Sigma 18 to 52.8 zoom in its initial Sony variant. But that will give you some idea of what to expect when it becomes available in the Fujifilm mount, hopefully very, very soon. If you find what I do useful, I'd love it if you consider subscribing to my channel. And if I've saved you some money or really helped you decide which lens to buy next, you could always treat me by buying me a cup of coffee or treat yourself to a copy of my in-camera photography book, which you can see behind me here, or maybe even a Camera Labs t-shirt or mug. And there's links to everything, including the latest prices in the links below. So let me know which is your favorite of the three Sigma Primes, whether it's gonna really change which lens you buy for your Fujifilm system going forward, and whether they've made the right choices. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.